Next to the remote mic amp controls are the controls for the channel outputs. Each channel strip has two independent output sections, referred to as the channel output and the utility output respectively. By default, the channel output receives the post-process pre-routing channel signal. However, two switches replace this with a pre-fader feed or a pre-process post-gain trim signal. A further option routes an N-1 mix, often termed a mix minus or a clean feed to the channel output. This mix is derived by subtracting the channel signal from a mono console-wide reference mix that, by default, all input channels feed. This approach ensures that every mono or stereo channel can derive an N-1 mix which consists of all channels routed to the N-1 bus minus itself. If required, channels can be removed from the N-1 bus via an N-1 key in the routing section of the master channel. The channel direct output can be visually monitored on the channel meter via the settings menu and the AFL key routes the signal to the AFL monitor speakers. Output level can be adjusted via the gain control and the tone and talkback keys replace the post gain control output signal with tone or talkback respectively. The external key offers further flexibility by routing an external signal set via the console routing pop-up to the channel output. This could be an off-air monitor feed or a station ident, for example. The utility output shares all the same source and monitoring features of the channel output, but omits the N-1 option. Instead, in conjunction with the root key, it adds additional flexibility to the console routing by sending pre-fader or pre-processed channel feeds to the utility buses. These parallel submixes can then feed a recorder or be used as clean stems by another production area. Enabling the root key sets the current utility output source as the feed for the utility bus routing. When routed to a stereo or 5.1 utility bus, panning follows the main channel panning regardless of the source being derived pre-fader or pre-processing. Level control is available via the encoder in the utility output section of the master channel. Using the edit layer menu, the utility output can be assigned to a control surface channel strip as an additional short channel. This gives full fader control of the utility output level, as well as linking the fader AFL key to the utility output monitor function. One of the soft keys in the channel strip free control sections becomes the root function key, and the second soft key adds independent panning to the selected utility bus via the channel strip pan pot. The utility channel can be used to add additional input capacity by selecting the external input function as the source for the utility section. Remote controlled mic amps can be assigned as input sources and gain controlled via the UOP mic key, which redirects the channel mic gain controls to the source assigned to the channel external input. The utility channels, in conjunction with the utility buses, become submixers, effectively doubling the input capacity of a given C100 channel configuration. As well as the controls for the channel strip processing, the master tile has dedicated menu access keys for the majority of console routing and configuration options, located at the base of the tile. The menus are displayed as pop-ups in the lower section of the channel TFT display above the master channel, controlled by a stepped encoder together with left-right page keys. The information is presented directly to the operator with local tactile control and without compromising the main metering and status information displayed on the center section touchscreen. Six master menu keys in conjunction with a shift key access the various channel strip routing and configuration options. The root menu handles all console routing operations. All internal and external source and destination signals are presented within user configured signal groups. A simple three column display with operational prompts above the columns and selection status below offers a logical routing path interface. Current source and destination assignment is always shown, and additional keys for multiple source selection and automatic incremental routing simplify setting up complex console routing. Incoming signals can be directly routed to outputs, bypassing the console processing. There are no restrictions on multiple destination routing either, eliminating the need for external distribution amplifiers in many installations, and both incoming and outgoing AES pairs can be routed as individual mono streams. Once a channel strip has been attention to the master channel, then the channel setting menu can be used to access additional channel functionality, including meter source, processing order, 
channel format, as well as recalling channel presets for EQ, dynamics and routing setups. As with the routing menu, the simple column display places the various functions in the leftmost column. Selecting an item via the encoder displays the available options in the adjacent column. The right key accesses the next column where the required option could be selected, again using the encoder. The encoder switch is then used to confirm the selection. The channel settings menu supports the multi and all function keys, so that a specific setting can be changed for a range of channels or for all the channels in the console. With the free key menu key active, to program a channel strip free control requires operating the free control to be assigned, followed by the function on the master channel that the control will be assigned to. This action is then repeated for the other channel strip free controls or for other channels via the attention key. Additional functions not found on the master channel, such as GPIs, can be selected from the free control pop-up via the master encoder. Console user layer configuration requires use of the edit menu, which is one of the shift key options. The first column displays the various console paths that can be controlled from the channel strip faders. The second column displays the path numbers or names in the selected entry. Channel strips are selected with the attention keys and the strip numbers displayed at the top of the pop-up. Selecting a path will then sequentially add ascending paths to the selected strips. An array of strips can be selected by holding the first attention key, then operating the last key in the group. New layers are created using the right arrow key to select new and the encoder switch to confirm the action. Clone creates a new layer which is a copy of the current layer being edited. The layout of the fader strips in the user layers can be further edited with the exchange and move commands. With move enabled, within the current layer, a fader strip or multiple strips can be shuffled to a different section of the console. Move can be used between layers to copy specific strips from one layer to a new layer, overwriting the paths originally assigned to the strips in the destination layer. The exchange function swaps the position of the selected strips either within the current layer or between layers. To copy settings from one channel to another or to multiple channels, activate copy and then attention the channel which contains the settings to be copied. Attention the target channel or channels. If only specific elements are required, use the master encoder to select or deselect the required elements via the pop-up, followed by the set key to complete the copy functions. Swap can be used to exchange settings between two channels, again using the pop-up to select the channel strip elements. The final function keys are group, used for assigning faders to the 16 master groups or other channel faders via the fader strip M&S keys, and link to set up the channel strip secondary path.